OK Troops, this is my favourite experiment of all time and it's got a bit of a local connection. We're going to determine the relationship between the pressure of a fixed mass of a gas and its temperature. So we've got a round bottom flask of air submerged in a beaker of cold water with ice in it. That water is about 5 degrees C and the pressure of that air in the flask at the moment using the red scale on this pressure cage, each digit is 0.1, so that's about 0.98 times 10 to the 5 newtons per square metre. Remember, newtons per square metre is the same as pascals. So we're going to heat the water, and every 20 degrees, we're going to measure the temperature and measure the corresponding pressure on the pressure gauge. And of course it's important that while we do that, we give the water a little stir, make sure the heat is dispersed evenly. So, 20 degrees, there we have it. 20 degrees in the thermometer and our corresponding pressure is 1.04 times 10 to the 5 newtons per square metre. That's our second result, let's keep heating. And then when the temperature gets to 40 degrees, there's 40 degrees, our corresponding pressure is, let's give it a little tap, I think we have to tap the pressure gauge to make sure we're reading the correct reading, that's pretty much on 1.1 times 10 to the 5 newtons per square metre. Let's keep heating, let's go up to 60 degrees, and at 60 degrees, the pressure is, you know, tap again, 1.14 times 10 to the 5 newtons per square metre. And the last one then, 80 degrees, don't want to go any more than that because we don't want the water boiling, so at 80 degrees the pressure is, let's tap it again, and I reckon we're at 1.18 times 10 to the 5 newtons per square metre. So we've got all our results. We're going to take all of those results and we're going to draw a graph. OK, don't forget that 1 Pascal is the same as 1 newton per square metre. And our scale in this case was reading in times 10 to the 5 Pascals. So make sure my axes are labelled correctly on the graph. And there's the graph of our results. As the temperature goes up, the pressure goes up. But that graph does not go through the origin. Nowhere near it. If we extend that graph backwards though, there must be a point where it cuts the x-axis. So there must be a temperature where the pressure reaches zero. That temperature is minus 273 degrees C. That's the temperature at which the kinetic energy of the particles of the gas would decrease to zero. So the pressure would be zero. And that is what we call absolute zero. And the temperature scale that starts at absolute zero is called the Kelvin scale, which is named after this fine-looking chap, William Thompson or Lord Kelvin, who did most of his work up at Glasgow University. In fact, there's an industrial estate named after him in East Kilbride, the Kelvin. And on the reverse side of this monument, there we have a reminder telling us of his contribution in establishing absolute zero. So if we want to establish the relationship between pressure and temperature, we need to have all of our temperatures in Kelvin. And to do that, to convert your temperatures to Kelvin from Celsius, you simply add 273. So there's all our temperatures that have been converted into Kelvin. They've all had 273 added to them. And there's our pressure measurements from the previous table. Now I've added a third column here and we're going to take our pressure values and divide them by the temperature in Kelvin. So it's P over T is our last column here. And if we do that for each row in the table, we can see that what we get is pressure.
pretty much a constant value. So we can write that like this, p over t equals a constant, or indeed p1 over t1 equals p2 over t2, and that's the second of the gas law equations, the pressure law, but remember, your temperature must be in Kelvin. And as usual, there's always an alternative way of deriving that same relationship, and that is to draw a graph. So we're going to have our temperature along the bottom in Kelvin, our pressure on the y-axis, and we're going to plot a graph of our results. Now the points are all going to be very, very close together, because those temperatures are very, very close together. So there's our first point, second point, our third point is about here, fourth point, and our last point, 353, 1.18 gives us a straight line through the origin, so P over T is a constant, and again P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2, that's the pressure law. Don't forget though that the volume is remaining constant, and it's a fixed mass of a gas. Most importantly, your temperatures must be in Kelvin.